Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Mary Blessing, and I'm um, so excited to be here. I flew in over eight hours from Nigeria <laughs> for, for this, and I'm thankful to the organizers for the opportunity. So um, today, we'll be talking about um, recognizing the driving forces of um, impactful OS projects. And um, um, first of all, you would agree with me that um, you know, open source um, is being used by large organizations. And um, something as I had realized recently is that um, six out of, say, 10 people I had, you know, had conversations with and like, interacted with about open source, they um, often think that open source is like code-centric, um, which is not true, right? Um, they always think of it to be uh, maybe fixing bugs in the code or maybe um, working on an entirely new feature. And you know, it has always been code. Uh, but luckily for um, people like myself, you know, we have always you know, been talking about you know, um, the importance of no-code contributions in the open source um, community, right? And one question that I have always been asked is that, um, you know, um, or the question that usually arises, you know, what if um, open source contributions, you know, um, it's like a gateway for employment, right? Um, because um, if you are going to be working with, say, an organization, for instance, um, you usually need to have um, some sort of experience. And um, this is something open source, you know, freely and openly gives to you, right? You could gain experience from this project you contribute to, and you can, you know, present this to um, recruiters or employers, right? So I personally believe that it is very important that early on we start, you know, um, identifying um, these people, these contributions, and also um, recognizing them um, as much as we can. Likewise, um, the, the, the um, developers and programmers as well that usually contribute to um, open source projects, right? So, um, uh, okay, sorry. All right, so um, recently um, I noticed that um, big tech companies use open source um, software. I had mentioned this before, right? And um, what is even more interesting is that a um, good percentage of the employees of these companies are like non-engineers, and that's really interesting because we have folks like those in the marketing products, you know, community and data um, science field as well, you know, working for these big tech companies. And um, usually um, I, I keep asking myself, um, so if they're like these folks in these companies, um, why is it that they're not being talking, um, talk about more often that, that like um, as needed, right? Um, when I came in um, to um, this conference um, on Monday um, for bar camp and everybody that I literally interacted with, you know, kept asking, oh, um, what do I do, like, which part of open search do I work in? And, you know, um, it's, it was always about programming, and I was like, oh, there's no other, maybe, say, um, there is no other um, field that they were asking me about, right? Um, it was always, oh, what embedded system, and you know, those things are really technical for me because I am not a technical person. Then um, I also um, realized from a blog by Chad in sometime in 2017 that the alphabet employs about 50,000 non-engineers, right? And um, so if they do, why don't we really talk about these people as much as you know sh that we should be talking about them, right? Um, and also, remember the question of you know, what happens if the focus shifts towards utilizing open source contributions as a gateway to um, employment, right? Uh, because in reality, your experience is usually required of you to like, join an organization. And like I said, open source you know, is just like an amazing way to get those experience um, without working for an actual company, right? Um, then, um, before we go right into it, I wanted to quickly walk us through my tech or open source journey. Um, so, um, I wanted to share my journey with you all so that you can also see how, you know, um, I have been able to, like, uh, move from a certain level to another. Um, and all of this was made possible um, 
um, through open source, right? Um, first of all, I started out you know, as an explorer, very confused, um, had zero guidance, and um, you know, many months down the line, I became what I consider myself a newbie. Um, I was exploring a lot of um, career paths, product management, digital marketing, you know, coding. I did code um, um, as a mobile developer with the uh, um, Dart language and F um, Flutter framework by Google. Then um, afterwards, I did found a mentor who is a community builder. Then um, many years down the line, I um, started building communities um, back in Nigeria. And um, I also, uh, because of the work I do as a community builder, I also handle a lot of projects as well. And um, in that process, I found open source and um, you know, started contributing to open source, specifically the Chaos Project, right? So I um, became um, a Chaos Project contributor, and now this is like three years down the line, and um, you know, um, also a community architect in developers' relations, and um, as a contributor in the Chaos Project, I lead um, what we have called the Tour Guide Initiative. And the uh, um, purpose for this is to pretty much move um, contributors from explorers in the project to um, making meaningful contributions, right? And um, also contributing as a member of the DEI working group, where we pretty much um, build or rather create metrics um, that is DEI centered, right? Then I also um, you know, started co-sharing the community managers working group um, after many months in the, in the community, right? Then um, currently I was also nominated by the board of members to join the code of conduct committee as well. So that has been my um, progression <laughs> in, um, in open source, specifically the um, chaos project, right? So now, um, originally, right, um, open source contributions um, were seen or has been seen primarily as a way to learn and build technical skills, right, um, which is really cool. Um, um, and also, the focus was on, no co on code contributions, like you know, fixing bugs, um, adding features, or maybe building something new from scratch. Um, and um, employment also came from showcasing these technical skills on a resume or um, portfolio, and also showing your GitHub profile, you know, the whole GitHub um, graph, the green points. Right, so um, that is usually what personally I have seen a lot of recruiters and employers um, ask of people, you know, before they um, employ them into the organization. But um, open source contributions should be valid, uh, or rather, should be valued as a way to demonstrate not only technical skills, right, um, but also soft skills, which are, you know, equally crucial to that particular um, organization, right, and um, contributions like documentation, you know, outreach, community management, should also be recognized as valuable and not just um, the technical um, contributions as well. And um, I also feel like employers should see open source involvement as a way to gauge work ethic, um, collaboration skills, problem solving abilities, and, and also give no code contributors a chance, right? Because um, um, they are equally doing amazing um, for these projects just like the, um, the programmers in that particular project as well. So yeah, um, I wanted to like, you know, show us, um, sorry, I wanted to like show us um, this graph just to like expand on my point on the um, GitHub um, graph points, right? Um, the graph, um, so this is Desmond, um, GitHub's profile. Um, Desmond was supposed to be here as a speaker, but unfortunately he couldn't make it. And um, he's a software engineer and a developer advocate. Um, this is what his GitHub graph looks like, which is really amazing. You see that Desmond, um, you know, does a lot of contributions in open source, and you know, he also like um, he's really active, you know, in his career path, right? And um, you know, if you were a recruiter or an employer and you see this like this, you probably will be like, oh, this is, this is nice, right? Uh, but how about um, 
this graph, you know, um, compare this to the previous one you've seen, you think, oh, this person is probably um, not serious, right? Um, because they are um, no code contributors, that's me, <laughs> actually, um, that's me. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, right, um, a lot of times recruiters, you know, use this as a way to gauge um, um, people who should be, you know, part of their organization and those who shouldn't, right? Um, I mean, I could go on and on to keep showing you graphs of no-code contributors, right? But then you get the point. Um, so, but now that you've seen um, that these contributors, um, contributions are important, you've seen, like, um, you know, shared my journey. Um, so I would also like to like mention or rather showcase some of the open source um, no code contributions that are out there. And um, you should consider, especially if you are um, an open source um, project owner or maintainer, right? Um, so yeah, I have tagged this redefining open source contributions uh, because um, it's not just about codes. Um, these contributions or this field as well are equally important. So there is community management, which is what I do for the chaos projects. Um, and my work is usually around making people feel welcomed in the community. And like I said, leading the tour guide initiatives that also help me um, bring more people into the project or rather still help them stay in the project, right? Um, design. Um, I'll also be showing a slide of, you know, what it is uh, or what it means to like have a really cool design for an open source project. Then even planning. Um, last year we did the Chaos Africa Con, or Chaos Con Africa, and um, you know I was part of the um, planning committee for that, and I also was the MC for that event. So it was really amazing. And um, I am including this as a no code um, contribution because. Um, in as much as you know, the softwares are there, um, organizing events like this, uh, bringing the community together is also like, very, very important. Then documentation, I mean, what's a project, a software without an, an amazing documentation? Um, a clear and concise documentation. Um, then there is also translation as a contribution. Um, for us at Chaos, we are always on the lookout for um, folks that could help maybe translate um, our softwares you know, from English to, say, Chinese, um, Japanese, Japanese, um, even German, right? Um, so if you have the skills, you're always welcome in the project. Administrations, um, this is where the project management um, contributors fall in, and what they pretty much do is that they help see that the projects, you know, um, that we have going on is, you know, being delivered timely, right? And, uh, you know, everyone who needs to work on that project, you know, uh, you know, doing what they need to do, checking in on them, and, and so on. Then there is user testing, just the way you have software testing in um, a proprietary um, company. That's also how it is in open source. So um, software testers could also contribute their skills to open source projects. Um, data analysis, this is partially uh, a no-code contribution, and that's because I know data um, analysts, they also have to do a lot of things around coding. But yeah, um, they do also work around research as well, um, which is no-code, so that's really cool. Then outreach, um, this is the Chaos Project, um, the Africa chapter. Yesterday, we did an outreach, you know, reaching out to people with disabilities um, to bring them into open source and technology at large, and it really went well. So um, folks that helped organize this, that was also a way to contribute to the project, right? Because what we did was to let them know more about the Chaos Project, open source and technology, and um, that really went well. Um, for legal, um, I feel like running one particular project is very, very easy, but when you start running things around OSPO, it gets really complicated easily, and um, say having a lawyer in the team could really, really, really be helpful, and um, I mean, it's, it's it's um, it's needed, or uh, yeah, it's needed that they are able to like um, they like tech savvy. They understand technology, or at least they have a better understanding of that particular project or software, right? Uh, but the good part is that um, a lot of the help you will need from from lawyers are not necessarily their technical knowledge, but you know um, what they can help you solve within that project, um, which is really really helpful as well. So. Um, 
so yeah, I had a chat with some um, no-code contributors, and this is Dawn, Dawn Foster. She happens to be the lead maintainer for the data science and working group at Chaos. And um, yeah, she, she was sharing um, how um, her skills you know, as a data scientist has really, really helped the project. You know, um, she talked about how she often talk about talk to organizations who are struggling to use the chaos tools and metrics and, you know, provide them with suggestions on how, to, you know, they can use those um, resources, um, which is really, really cool, right? That is a very cool way to contribute to the project as well. And um, she also mentioned, um, you know, um, the the practitioner guide, she's recently working on that, or rather recently started working on that, um, has been very, very helpful, you know, um, to use data to improve um, open source um, projects as well, right? And yeah, she's also a contributor to the CNCF, um, um, yeah, to CNCF and contributing um, the Contributor Strategy Technical Advisory Group, right? Um, you know, um, she mentioned how they were looking for projects to meet specific criteria, and um, she used those metrics to, you know, um, gauge those criteria, and um, they were able to, like, um, um, ask them about participating in the panel proposal for KubeCon um, CFP. So I feel like, you know, um, beyond writing codes, um, just having an understanding or just um, having something to share within the project is also a good way to contribute. Uh, so, yeah, I also had a chat with Kinsley. Kinsley is the design maintainer at Chaos, and uh, he mentioned how, you know, what the what him and his team, what they do, has been a critical part of the project development process. Um, you could see how after the design and development of the Chaos DI badging website, which I'll be showing us shortly, uh, there was a request to optimize the user experience, sorry, um, design on the Augur project. So Augur is a software in Chaos that helps you pretty much um, pull data from um, platforms like GitHub, Slack, so you like, you know, understand um, how well your project is doing, you know, how people are contributing, how many PROs have been merged, for instance, um, is a really large um, data platform or software, right? And uh, yeah, even within the tech ecosystem, um, Kinsley mentioned that there's been a gradual cultural shift from the notion that you know, open source is only for engineers and um, yeah, no code contributors can you know, be of great addition as well. Um, yeah, his work is really, really important for us because this helps bring more um, people, um, designers specifically, to the chaos project and pretty much makes a lot of the stuff we do easier. So yeah, this is the before of Chaos DEI event badge in the website. Um, 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 amazingly, Berlin Boswood um, applied for the DEI um, um, event badge, and um, I don't know, I think um, was given um, what badge now? So yeah, you apply and um, you can, you can um, so you get to answer a few questions, and um, you know, this bot has been run on GitHub, and it kind of like um, gives a score. So if you get from, um, that would be 70 to 100, you get a gold badge. And uh, what that helps you do is that you just see how um, DI focused your, your event is, right? Um, so this is what it looks like before. You see how very um, clustered the whole thing is. But after they redesigned by Kinsley and his team, um, this, is, this is the latest version now, which is pretty cool, easy to understand. You can see how many events have been badged, um, how many projects have been badged. Um, you know, it's just very easy to navigate, and the choice of color is amazing as well, right? Um, so, so yeah, this is just um, to help you see um, what you know having a design. Um, say design group or yeah working group in a project how valuable it is as well um so Next, um, community marketing specialist at Async API, that's a friend. Um, she recently got that role. Um, I had added it here because the title seems very interesting. And um, she shared how 
her role is really making an impact in the Async MPI project. It's an open source project, a Linus Foundation project. And um, she's driving marketing initiatives to increase the awareness and adoption of Async API, um, leveraging data-driven um, insights to optimize their efforts. Um, she, according to her, she will be collaborating a lot with the marketing working group to define and execute strategies that align with you know, their community needs, you know, engaging with community across different channels, which includes social media forums and events, you know, just pretty much bringing more people interested in the project. And I pretty much feel like her work is really, really valuable because what that helps to do is that um, she's talking to people about the project and, you know, um, depending on how she does that, you know, get more people get excited about it. They come into the project and, uh, you know, more people in the project, more diverse opinions, um, the better um, that particular project. So, to the main reason why we are here, um, recognizing the driving force of impactful OS projects, um, but this time around it's going to be the chaos way. Um, and this is because um, I have been in the chaos project for so long and uh, we've had to like, try so many things to just see that we um, identify, uh, but not just identify these um, awesome people, but also recognize the efforts that they put into making the project very successful. So yeah, um, we found a problem, um, and um, the problem was pretty much that, uh, I mean, we've already um, had thoughts around how to, um, you know, bring in that initiative, but then it occurred that one of the chaos contributors happened to um, apply for something, and you know, the organization said, oh, we'd like to see your GitHub profile. And she's a no-code contributor in the project, and she didn't have, any of those green points ticked, so it was um, a problem. And um, sadly, she didn't get that opportunity. So um, when we realized that, um, we, we knew that was a problem, and um, we you know, identified the cause of that particular problem. That's because we've not really been you know, um, um, putting in efforts into how to like, um, showcase the work our no-code contributors um, do as well. Then we figured out how to like a way, a way to solve that particular problem, right? Um, now let's look at some of the ways um, we have been able to recognize um, the the work that no code contributors in our community do. So yeah, to the solutions, right? Um, we started the chaotic of the week, right? And um, this this is a way that we recognize no code contributors in the in the project and um, the first screenshot you see there is um, from our global community manager, Elizabeth Barron, and that, that was me, the first time I was being recognized. I remember how I felt. Um, it was an exciting feeling, you know, having to see that the projects you put in so much effort in, you know, also see the work that you do, right? And the next is, that was last week, that was Desmond. He was also recognized for his um, contributions as well. And I mean, this is also for, um, code contributors as well, um, but originally we had um, no code contributors in mind when we started this. Uh, next is the community contribution highlights. Um, this is still a uh, work in progress because um, we're always looking for ways to like make this better, but the idea is that there is this GitHub table where no code contributors can you know, come, put in their GitHub username, um, what tasks they have completed, um, the project area. Uh, this is because um, we have different project areas in chaos, right? And um, the date that was completed and the type of contribution, right? So um, they can fork the repo, it's very easy, um, and they um, you know, send a PR request. Um, it gets merged by a maintainer, which I am a maintainer on that particular repo, and um, yeah, the contribution is being added, and we all know what it does. It goes back to GitHub graph, and it takes the green point. So that was um, that was really awesome initiative, and that has really been helpful for no code contributors in the community. Right. So the next was that we started the ambassador program, and this was a way to. Um, 
you know, help recognize people that are, you know, being stayed longer in the community, um, you know, give them that power to, you know, do more awesome work, um, support them to maybe go for conferences like this and talk more about what we do at Chaos, get more people involved. And, uh, yeah. Then, yeah, of course, there are extras, um, which is, you know, um, for your projects, you can give badges to your no-code contributors that they could have on their GitHub or LinkedIn um, profile. Um, I think Credly is an amazing platform to do that. Then another thing is to um, um, co-authorship on pull requests. So when a developer wants to send a pull request and say, we had a designer work on that particular project before the developer codes it, uh, what would happen is that when they want to send the pull request, they can say, oh, co-authored by the um, designer's um, name and email, and that should also match with their GitHub profile. And um, yeah, they could send that pull request, and um, that could also you know, help um, you know, people who probably visit that to see, oh, not just the developer, but also the designer, or also maybe someone who worked on the documentation um, also contributed um, on that particular project. Um, yeah, from time to time, you might also want to think about giving honorariums to your um, project contributors. Um, yeah, that's an awesome way to, you know, recognize the amazing work that they do um, to, you know, keep your projects um, going. Um, I think I was speaking with someone yesterday, and they talked about their open source project, Gina AI, and um, they said how they pretty much do uh, recognizing contributors is to have a, f I don't know, I think like a flag on GitHub where it lists all contributions and contributors. Um, I found it really, really interesting, and um, I, I think I, I should also speak to her more. <laughs> Maybe we can also implement that in the Chaos project. So, but yeah. Um, these are ways um, to like, um, um, you know, recognize the efforts of no-code contributors um, within your project, right? So uh, in conclusion, um, really, um, if you're here and you're really like second-guessing, oh, is no-code contribution a thing? Yes, it is. I know many of us here are really technical, but um, no-code contribution is actually a thing. And, um, well, sure. And if you're like me and, you know, you're already, like, say, a community builder, um, a uh, marketing specialist, um, I think I also want to remind you that um, your contributions are really, really valuable and um, most importantly that you be your biggest advocate, right? Always talk about the work that you do um, so that more people get to, you know, see that um, even though you're a no-code contributor, you're also making um, impact um, within the project you are contributing to as well. Uh, and if you are a project founder, um, I hope, um, I mean, my hope is that <laughs> with this talk, you're able to see the importance of no-code contributions, like the design I had showed you, um, the marketing specialist, you would see how she would be driving a lot of awareness to the um, Async API project. Um, I mean, and um, most importantly, that you implement strategies, you know, to not just give them a chance to come into the project, but also recognize them for the efforts that they bring in. Um, then lastly, um, yeah, I got this amazing quote from Nate, and it says, even if you write an amazing program, no one will use it if you don't explain what it does and how to use it. And this is specifically for people, you know, technical writers or people doing open source contributions around documentation, right? Um, I also feel like no one will use it if your documentation is not easy to understand, which is why you need um, a, a writer in the project to you know, help simplify um, what project or software it is that you have built in that particular um, um, project, right? Um, and yeah, on the community side, if your community is not very welcoming, um, I don't think anybody would stay because um, I also saw this quote recently that um, I came for the code but stayed for the community. And um, that, that really, really um, is just something um, a lot of people stay within open source projects um, because of the community and not just because of the code. 
Um, yeah, so, so far you've been listening to me, myself, May Blessing Okoli, and um, I'm a community architect, DI advocate, and a Chaos Project contributor. And if you would like to stay in touch, that is my LinkedIn um, QR code. You can scan that and we can stay in touch. Um, sorry. Thank you. And if there's any questions, I will be happy to take this. Yeah, thanks a lot for emphasizing all the important work that has been done around the coding in open source. Very insightful. Do we have some questions from the audience? All right, while they think about it, maybe I can ask you a question. Sure. <laughs> I was wondering how many working groups do you have in the chaos project that are non-coding related? Because you talked about different working groups as well, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, we have the DI working group. Um, we have the design working group as well. We have the research working group. Uh, we have the um, comms. And, and that is the social media um, folks, marketing folks under the comms. Uh, we also have people who help with organizing our podcast, so they are all under comms, right? Uh, yeah, I think so far those, those are the no code um, working groups we have in Chaos. Yeah, that's, so that's four different groups beside mm -hmm. the coding team. Wow, mm -hmm. that's a lot, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. All right, I think everybody is ready for lunch. Oh, I see one question. Okay. Cool. Hello. You talk from the point of view of somebody who is a no-code contributor. And I have a question about attracting these people. Because for code contributors, it's sort of automatic to go and find some project to work on. And you don't get people like yourself just joining. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that is, first of all, because a lot of people, you know, when they hear open source, they hear coding, they hear programming, right? So there needs to be a lot of sensitization around, oh, it's actually okay to contribute as, say, a technical writer, a community manager, right? Uh, and also, your project needs to also position itself the way that would also attract these um, people as well. Um, if I visit your project website, for instance, and I'm only seeing, oh, um, maybe uh, contributing with your React skills or Java skills, I would initially think, oh, uh, maybe I'm not needed here. I have to be a Java developer, for instance, to be able to contribute. But if you can detail on your, you know, say, a, your quick start guide on your um, project website, for instance, or GitHub profile, um, how the many ways people can contribute or the areas where you need help or we need help managing the community. Um, so that would help me as a person who are saying that, you know, okay, um, they actually need maybe a community person here, and I could, you know, join the Slack or any other forum you use for um, discussions and conversation. So yeah, I feel like, first of all, your project has to position itself in a way that encourages no-code contributors to come into the project. And um, for no-code contributors as well, um, if um, I, I also, also let them know that sometimes the project owners might not know what they want, so you can just go in there you know, and let them know, oh, I, I think um, people are leaving your community. Would you mind you know, me coming in to help just put people together, maybe from time to time have gatherings like this, you know, just to like, you know, celebrate the awesome thing you do um, in the project, right? So yeah, um, I mean, that's like why people like me is this, you know, advocating for um, no code contributions and letting them know that it's okay to actually contribute as a no-code person. But yeah, your project, position yourself in the way that is welcoming for these folks as well. Thanks a lot again for your um, contribution. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks everybody for listening. I think now um, we're ready for lunch and the lunch break is up. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Thank you.